Welcome to Primary today. We're going to start off with an opening song. Our opening song will be The Church of Jesus Christ from the Jeff Slade YouTube channel. This week we are studying 3rd Nephi chapter 27 through 4th Nephi and the Book of Mormon video scripture pop project YouTube channel sums it up. Have you ever needed to make an important decision but weren't sure which way was best? This gets even harder when others are involved with their opinions. Well, this is exactly what's happening after Jesus ascended to heaven the first time after teaching the Nephites and the Lamanites in America. And the decision? What to name his church. Now, think about it for a moment. Huh? They were doing their best, hmm? but they just didn't have a clear direction. Hmm. So they fasted and prayed to know what to do. And Jesus came and stood among them and asked, why are you debating? Don't you remember you were commanded to take upon you the name of Christ? So even though it has his name, his church must also be built on his gospel. Now the first requirement is straightforward. It's pretty easy to name his church after his name, Jesus Christ. But build on his gospel? Now that's a different story. The word gospel literally means good news. And Jesus defined what the good news is in two parts. First, what he did without our help. And second, what he needs us to do with his help. So let's take a closer look. It truly is good news that God sent the perfect and innocent Jesus to be judged of men, to be lifted up, so that one day he will lift all of us up from the grave to be judged by him as we truly do have sin and so by taking on his name and following his gospel we truly have access to his powerful grace and mercy to be found innocent so now how exactly do we follow his gospel well that is the second part of the good news followers of christ need to exercise faith in him repent of their sins covenant through baptism get the Holy Ghost, and endure to the end. And we need his help in every step of the way. And so after explaining this to his disciples, Jesus succinctly says, the works you've seen me do, will you also do? Yes, followers of Jesus Christ increasingly become like him as they constantly ponder in situations, what would Jesus do? So now, as Jesus is ready to leave his 12 disciples here for the last time, he asks, what do you most desire? And nine of the 12 say to come directly into his kingdom after reaching 72 years old. But then he looks at the other three who are silent and replies, I know your thoughts. You want to stay on the earth and keep building my kingdom until I have come again. And then... He fulfills this great desire by taking them up into heaven to be transfigured. Trans what? Transfigured. It just means that now their bodies won't age or die or feel pain like John the Beloved of Peter and James and John fame. But they are also not yet resurrected or celestialized with glory. And so these three, not to be named disciples and not necessarily Nephites, were given special priesthood power to command the weather and wild beasts as they continued preaching all over. And yes, they are still here on the earth today doing God's work. Now in the last few chapters of 3rd Nephi, Mormon reminds us again that when his book is spreading around the world, that is God's sign that he is gathering those who will listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd 
and join his fold for the last time before the millennium. And so finalizes Jesus' visit to the Nephites and Lamanites. But strike that, ites, because now there weren't any ites, as there was just one people of the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, we learn now here in 4th Nephi that the church grew more than ever until all had joined. And now there was great peace and miracles. No wars, contentions, poor, outcasts, or prisoners. And their single nation grew and spread as they rebuilt their cities, added new ones, and everyone treated each other as equals, having no wealth or social classes. And the best part of all, this super happy, pure-hearted society lasted for nearly 200 years. So we don't have to wait for the millennium to start to experience the tremendous blessings of Fort Nephi. We really can enjoy Christ's good news gospel now through obeying our covenants, writing his name in our hearts, and doing our very best to live each day the way Jesus would have us. And with that help, we can do it. Okay, back to the story. But the hearts of men are unsteady and forgetful. And after these 200 years, we must see how this people's tragic final downfall began. What was it? What caused their beautiful, good tree eventually to become wild again? First, that universal sin, pride, or enmity, slowly began to creep in as some started distinguishing themselves by ranks, and some felt they were better than others. Yes, this little seed of pride germinated until wealth classes began again, complete with costly apparel, jewels, riches, while others were in poverty. Next, false churches began to be built up again to get gain. And then many stopped listening to the prophets and contended with each other. And then, as their faith dwindled and pride raged, finally, wickedness began to be celebrated. And so as 4th Nephi closes, Amaron, the third to last record keeper, sees the nation so wicked that there's now little hope left. But before Amaron, a direct descendant of Alma, dies, he hides all the plates up in the hill shim and tells a very young ten-year-old boy where to find them when he's older. And so begins Mormon, our compiler and narrator's epic life. We belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. How can the Savior's words help us understand the importance of belonging to the Church of Jesus Christ? In 3 Nephi chapter 27, verse 7, Jesus says, Therefore, whatsoever ye shall do, ye shall do it in my name. Therefore, ye shall call the church in my name, and ye shall call upon the Father in my name, that he will bless the church for my sake. The Correct Name of the Church by President Russell M. Nelson What is the correct name of the church? The correct name is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Why is it important to always use the correct name of the church instead of nicknames like Mormon Church? People who hear the term Mormon may think we worship the prophet Mormon. We don't. The Savior said, if a church be called in my name, then it is my church. Who named the church? The Savior Jesus Christ did. He said, For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. What does it mean to take Jesus Christ's name upon us like it says in the sacrament prayer? It means to tell others through our actions and our words that Jesus is the Christ. Here's two examples of what you might be asked someday by a friend. What church do you go to? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Or, do you go to the Mormon Church? That's a nickname. I go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You're welcome to come with me anytime. Jesus Christ directed us to call the church by his name because it is his church filled with his power. Jesus wants his church to be built on his gospel. It says welcome on here, and here, and on our chapels everywhere. And we mean it. Come sit with us. Come stand with us. Come celebrate, and serve, and love, and learn, and love some more. Welcome to a community where we think of each other as family and act like we actually are. Because that's what 
Jesus taught to love one another, to bear each other's burdens, and to try every day to be a little bit better, a little bit kinder, a little more welcoming, because that's what Jesus taught. We can make you a better person, and you can make us a better church. What are some of the great blessings that come from being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ? God doesn't love us for just an hour or two once a week. So if church exists to help us feel closer to him, it needs to be bigger than a Sunday service. What if believers didn't just form a congregation? What if they formed an extended family of faith? So no matter where Mormons live, and they live all around the globe, one thing remains constant. Every member of the church belongs to a local group of believers called a ward. Here's the Relief Society, and every ward has one, and together they form one of the largest women's organizations in the world. Tonight, it looks like they're putting together care packages for neighbors in need. It's not easy being a teenager these days, so every ward has a strong youth program to reinforce values and to let the kids know they're not alone. Looks like someone needed some help moving. Oh, must be Monday. Time for family night at home. Tomorrow, neighborhood party. And it looks like everyone's invited. Sunday, the ward meets together, but there's no paid clergy. Everyone volunteers their time. That includes duties in the church and service projects around the community, or just dropping in to say hello. It's what Jesus Christ did, and that's why it's what Mormons do, wherever they are, all over the world. Living the gospel brings us joy. The happiness of the people described in 4th Nephi can help us understand that joy comes from living the gospel. Think about what makes you happy. The things that made the people happy in 4th Nephi are that there was no arguments, no contentions with anybody, that everyone was fair and kind to each other. There were no rich and no poor. Everyone was free and equal, no contention, because of the love of God which did dwell in their hearts. There was no lying, no stealing, no hurting of any people and they were all one. Different but the same by President Henry B. Eyring. The church is made up of people who come from different countries. We come from many backgrounds, but we have more in common than we have differences. Around us in the world, we see conflicts or arguments between people. Once I saw two good people get into an argument, they each believed they knew what was true. Their voices got louder and louder, their faces became red. Instead of talking about the issue, they were talking about why they were right. You can be a peacemaker. Even with all our differences, we are children of God. You can help yourself and others see common ground, or to see the things that people agree about. Ask for help from God, and then act. He will answer your prayer to help bring peace. Speak well of each other. You might remember the saying, if you can't say anything good about a person, don't say anything at all. I can promise you a feeling of peace and joy when you speak kindly of others. God the Father lives. He hears and answers our prayers. If we are united, which means working together as one, in sustaining the prophet and obeying the commandments, we will become what God wants us to be. When I was 
was chosen to lead the class to the lunchroom, I was asked to friend to help me. I picked this boy because others never choose him. I wanted to make him feel good. He thanked me for choosing him. He began to be nice to me. Being united, we've got um, a few word puzzles over here. So in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19, Paul taught that we are all part of the blank of God. What do you think that word is? Paul taught that we are all part of the right household of God. Alma taught the people that we taught that people should feel one, two, three, four toward each other. It's a four letter word that we should feel toward each other. Love. He taught that we should feel love toward each other. Jesus prayed that we might be one, two, three with him and Heavenly Father. What's well, a three letter word that Jesus wants us to be? That's right, he wants us to be one with him and Heavenly Father. And one more word puzzle. So, using these letters, write down other things we can do to practice unity. So the first one is you, and they already filled that one in to understand others. What's something that we could do with an N? What about not argue? That's something nice. I is say nice things about people. What's something with a T that is nice that we could do? How about share toys? And with Y, hmm. How about say yes to helping? A brother and a sister learned all about hot air balloons. They learned how to set them up. They learned how to fly them, and they learned what makes a hot air balloon fly. When the air gets hot inside the balloon, it rises up above the cold air. That's what makes a hot air balloon fly. If the air gets too cold, then the balloon starts to go down. That's why there's a burner in the balloon. It's there so they can make more hot air. After a long fight in their hot air balloon, they decided to land. Flying in a hot air balloon is kind of like living the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we want to be happy, then we must choose to follow God's commandments. It doesn't work if we try to make ourselves happy with lying and stealing, and it doesn't work if we try to make ourselves happy by hurting others. That's not how it works. But if we keep the commandments and try to follow Jesus Christ, then our hearts will be filled with the love of God. Then God can lift our hearts up and we will be filled with joy. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Did you know? 
think of some commandments that we could obey, that maybe we could do better in. In 4 Nephi 1, verse 15, is one example. It says, And it came to pass that there was no contention in the land because of the love of God which did dwell in the hearts of the people. Maybe we can be a little bit better about being peacemakers and not getting angry with others. Travis. Eh, I'm not 
buying it. Travis wouldn't do that on purpose. Just forgive him. Why should I? I didn't do anything. He did. Do you remember your promise? Promise? What are you even talking about? What did you promise when you got baptized? You take Christ's name, remember him, keep his commandments, and lift one another's burdens. I mean, you can't be angry with Travis and keep your part of the bargain. <sighs> all that feels impossible. Well, it probably does. You're spending all your time being angry at him. And now, as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens, that they may be light, yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places. sincerely and persistently do the spiritual work needed to develop the crucial spiritual skill of learning how to hear the whisperings of the Holy Ghost, you will have all the direction you will ever need in your life. President Russell M. Nelson The Church of Jesus Christ is built upon his gospel. The word gospel means good news, just as it was said in the video we watched. Imagine that you have a friend who asks you what you believe as a member of the church. In 3 Nephi chapter 27 verses 19 through 21, Jesus summarizes what his gospel is, that we do the works which we have seen Jesus do, that that is what we should do.
the random acts of kindness wall. Choose a place where your family can tape notes, a wall, mirror, or door. On the notes, write about nice things other people have done for you. See how many kind things your family can do for each other this month. Random acts of kindness don't have to be big or cost money. Here are some things that you can do at home or school. Write a note to someone you love. Give up your spot in line. Give someone a hug. Hold open the door for someone. Play with your siblings. Tell your parents you love them. Give a nice compliment. Smile at someone. Give away toys and books you don't use anymore. Clean up a mess you didn't make. Make someone smile. Sit by someone new at church. There's even many more options than these. Go ahead and make your own collection this week. Our closing hymn will be Love One Another from the Millennial Mormon Mom YouTube channel. And that concludes this week's lesson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.